Ho Ho Ho, The Singing Cowboy. Gene Autry sang that song, Here Comes Santa, in 1947. He sang many other songs, too, about Santa. In our tradition, we're thinking about, in the Southwest, the first important is probably the ristra. It's the string of chilies. They can be red or green. They're good for health and your good luck. The uh, tamales, they're very annual, Christmas time. They're mesa, corn made of, actually corn, of course, and they're wrapped in a corn husk. Uh, easy to carry and uh, very traditional. Luminarias, that was the way to show you the path. It was traditional, have a, a little sand in a brown bag and the little uh, candle, which was lighted along the way, and how far, but as far as you're going. And the last one is the lighted cacti. Uh, very impressive, but don't get too close. And of course, the Santa hat is the cap on top. So stay tuned. Day 36. Merry Christmas and thanks for watching. Live from Cave Creek, Arizona, it's that painting show starring the Color Queen. Here's Mrs. Claus. Hey, everybody. I'm Beth Zink alias uh, Mrs. Claus. Welcome to see you all. I'm so happy we're back to our videos. And uh, we're looking forward to doing lots more for you, but this is a great return during the holidays. Tis the season. Before we start with our snow scene and talking about all our other items that we have to share, Dr. John, Captain John, Santa John, who is today's lucky duck? Mrs. Santa Claus, the lucky duck, is Ryan and Tony. Ryan. Hair mail. <laughs> Ryan and Tony. Oh, and thanks for the candy cane. Great. <laughs> Ryan and Tony. Ryan and Tony are artist friends of ours who uh, were here along with Karen and Tom and Suzanne. Uh, for Hidden in the Hills, our two weekend annual studio tour event uh, the last few weeks. And they particularly wanted to encourage Captain John to get back on the videos. So here's to you, Ryan and Tony, for inspiring the captain to uh, move on. And well, thank you on. very much. I'm on the way. You are. Rock and roll. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Tis the season, tis the season of giving. Uh, and I wanna say that John and I have decided we will donate 5% of all of our De December sales uh, to our local charity, a favorite of ours, the Foothills Food Bank. So anything you purchase from us online or in person from now until the end of December, we're gonna to donate to Foothills Food Bank. A lot of people in need. We're very fortunate. Hurrah. Great call. So, okay. I was asked about painting snow. And gosh, I don't paint a lot of snow, but I know how to do it. The trick is to make everything look really gray, really off-white, really kind of bluish. And I think you ought to limit your palette when you're painting any, any snowscape or snow scene. What I think you should use for the background colors, whatever, is white, mostly white. Of course, whenever you want to paint light colors, you always start with white. And that just add what I call, not a technical term, a titch of the other color. So here I have my palette with white, and I've already done that side with Payne's Gray. This is what you get when you add Payne's Gray to white. You could also go use a little bit of ultramarine blue and get this blue. 
The more white you add, the lighter it gets. The third choice is cobalt blue. And I'm not washing out my brush. I should be, but I didn't because it's a TV show. But here is cobalt blue. You can see the difference between the cobalt and the ultramarine and the Payne's gray, even though I muddled them a little bit. Any of them will work. All of them will work. You might want to use all three. But white is the beginning color when you ever anything any want to paint anything really light. So what I did here was I roughed in Payne's gray and white in the background. I threw in a couple of mountains and then added more white here, a little bit of a hillside of snow here. Whenever you're painting snow, make sure that you're um, you know, where it's catching the light is going to be lighter. So have the upper part of the snow bank whiter than the lower part. So that's where you might just change the color a little bit. Let's try a little bit of the ultra green. I like that too. If you don't like what you've done, if you're working in acrylics, guess what? Let it dry, paint over it. By the way, I, I like your Santa Claus. So, Am I still blinking? <laughs> you are, and you can walk down the street and they would stop and go and stop and go. <laughs> right. Looking <Confused>. good. <laughs> well, you know, we had to get festive, right? Even though we, we live in the desert, we have to still get festive for the holidays. So, I am, what I did was I underpainted this. Threw in the mountains, just showed you how we hit the highlights on the snow. And they can be very irregular. Then what I did was I took a Sharpie. Sharpies are great. You can let the, let the acrylic paint dry and then, or excuse me, let the, yeah, let, let the acrylic paint dry and then come back in and just use a Sharpie to sketch in uh, your images, what you want to place in the painting. You can always paint over the Sharpie. You can also use a white chalk pencil to go over a darker color and paint over it. It's just helpful in determining where you want to place your elements in a composition. So I've done these, roughed them in. I am now going to use a, I like these little short, these little flat brushes. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint in these, oops, these little dark blobs, these forms that, you know, of conifers, pine trees, have Lots of needles and all that sort of stuff, but we don't see them from a distance. What we see are these forms, these generic kind of organic forms back and forth. If you remember old Bob Ross, he used to go, happy little trees, and he'd go back and forth with his brush, just like this. A fan brush he used. I'm not using a fan brush, but I would get the same effect if I did. So I'm going to rough in the density is generally in the center, right? Because out at the end of the branches, it's more open space. A little bit more dense in the middle. Also, don't put your trees all exactly the same distance apart. Put some closer together than others. Vary your sizes and your shapes in a painting for interesting composition. That's all I can say. It's just, it's a real simple way to make sure that you're going to turn out a great painting. Well, not, it's great. Not that this is going to Goodness be great. Sakes. But I'm just saying, here we are, even down in here, more trees, more little trees, happy little trees, boom, 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 boom. And even some shrubs. You can throw in a little bit of shrubbery down in here. This could make a great Christmas card. And it's not hard. It's, just, it's two colors. I mean, right now I am using nothing but white and paint gray. And you can 
throw in a deer or a bunny, something like that if you want to. I'm not into painting animals unless I'm, unless my client insists. But I think uh, you know you can create a more interesting composition, adding different elements. What I'm doing is I'm adding some balance by putting some heavier. And you can see I, I'm painting very quickly and loosely. I'll go back. I'll go back and add more detail later. But a lot of times it's fun just to rough in the drawing of a composition. Just kind of want to see where it's going. Look at it a little bit later and go, nah, I don't like that. Fine. Let it dry, paint over it. You get the gist of this, right? Nice. Just starts to look like a composition with lots. Looks cold to me. Looks real cold. I'm glad I don't live there anymore. Hey, by the way, do you have any uh, gift lists? Maybe some new brushes or paint? You mean for you to give to me? Oh, sure. Santa well, would, that ain't going to be brushes and paint, I'll tell you that Santa, right now. What Santa would bring you? I don't know. You could use oh, any more brushes. Oh, Santa, I am so fortunate. I I don't need anything. Uh, I don't need anything. I just How about need, a piece of coal? I need you and uh, our family, and, and that's all I need. I'm, I'm very fortunate. But I do have gifts for our uh, viewers. By the way, how would your eyes come out? You oh. see a little better? Oh, that's right. You know, I did. I had, uh, I never had vision correction in my life until a year or so ago. And all of a sudden I got these um, cataracts around the fast track. So I had both my eyes, both my eyes replaced. I had my eyes replaced. I had my cataracts removed uh, by laser. And now I can see like an eagle really cool <laughs> plus I think I can paint better so I'm sorry if you bought a painting before that but just kidding anyway um, we have some pearls of wisdom and they are from Winston Churchill you know he, Winston Churchill was an oil painter and that brought him great joy and probably a lot of relief in the middle of his uh, uh, stressful life. And he said, when I die and go to heaven, I want to spend the first million years painting so I can get to the bottom of the subject. Pretty wild, huh? Yeah, who? Hey, thanks for joining us. We're glad to be back and um, cheers.